he talks about how reading data from the database, he talks about single row fetches and how expensive it can be. Are there any statistics out in the database that would indicate if this process was occurring a lot? And the answer is yes. Let's walk through a little bit of the background. I don't want to repeat that entire talk, uh, but I'll give a little bit of the background, a couple of slides from that talk to help provide the background as to what I was referring to and how we can monitor it and improve things. This was all about the cost of latching when it comes to retrieving data. Your typical program, almost any program, either queries one row or it queries multiple rows. And so if you've written something in Java, it looks something like this. You've got open a result set and then you loop the result set doing fetches until you've exhausted the result set. It's a very typical and common programming sort of model and it's a bad one because we're doing single row fetches. The reason single row fetches generally can be a expensive operation in the Oracle database is we don't store information in rows. Now, that sounds a bit obtuse given that you might be thinking of tables being as rows and columns. Down in the storage layer, Oracle data is stored, as most of us know, in blocks. And so to read data, to read, to exercise you know, a fetch from a query, you actually read blocks from the database, not rows. And so it sort of looks, you know, in a very simple schematic, something like this. I've got a data file on disk, which is broken up into typically 8K blocks. Those blocks will be read into memory because historically, and to some degree today, disks are very, very slow and not great for concurrent access. So we read that information from disk in blocks into memory. And then from memory, we extract the information from the blocks to return our rows to our calling environment. That's a buffer cache 101 in a nutshell. So the problem is, is that intermediate memory layer Yes, we need it for performance, but access to memory from a database perspective is complex because lots of people access the same memory at the same time. And obviously up, up, lots of people change memory at the same time. So it's all gotta be protected and we protect it with latches. Typically when you fetch a row in a database block that's currently in memory, the logic looks something like this. I need to make sure that the memory I want to access and perhaps a, a linked list of memory I need to walk along to find that block isn't going to get swept out from underneath my feet while I'm walking along it. I don't want people changing the pointers, etc. So to make sure no one's going to touch it, I'll grab a latch which protects that list of blocks. So I'll get the latch, I'll walk along the list of blocks, find the block that I'm interested in, jump in there, extract the row I want because I'm fetching a row. I've now got the row, I no longer need exclusive control over that so I can release the latch and I can move along. And that's a single row fetch in a very simplified nutshell. Get the latch, find your block, find your row, release the latch. But of course, programs don't just do single row queries. They fetch rows, they loop, fetch, 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 fetch until the cursor is exhausted, which means get the latch, find the block, find the row, release the latch, get the next row. It's probably in the same block. There's a very good chance if you know, the predicates are sort of aligned that way. So it's get the latch, walk along the list, probably the same list, probably the same block, get the second row, release the latch, get the third row, get the fourth row, get the fifth row every time, grab a latch, walk the list, fetch the row, release the latch. And so you're getting a lot of latching just to actually fetch rows. A better strategy is a thing that we have in the database called pinning. And pinning, as the name suggests, is like when you stick a pin in a notice board with, with something that's a piece of information that's of interest to others. The way we do that is when we fetch a row, I want to let the database know that I'm not just doing a single row fetch. I'm fetching a row, but I'm probably going to come back and fetch lots more. This is not a primary key lookup. This is a fetch that's looping through multiple rows. And so the way that works is you'll get the latch, you walk along the list until you find the block of interest, and then rather than just grabbing the row, I'll put a pin, literally like, you know, like a drawing board pin, pin with a saying, hey, Connor's here. Please don't mess with this block while I'm here. And then I can release the latch because I've left a, sort of a piece of information there to tell others this block is special currently. Now that I've put my pin in, I can find the first row in that block, find the second row, find the third row, find all the rows that are relevant in that block. When I've finished with that block, I then grab the latch because I'm about to get exclusive access take my pin away and release the latch. So what I've done is I've dramatically reduced the amount of latching. It's rather now it's latches per block, effectively, as opposed to latches for every single row. And the question was, can we monitor this? Can we see it? Can we see what's going on? So I'm going to create a table here. It's what is it? It's 
10 copies of DBA objects. So it'll be probably around 800,000 rows. Yeah, 800,000 rows. What I'm going to do is I'm going to simply loop through. In fact, I'm running it for the first time here just to make sure all the various latches that will be involved in compiling this piece of PL SQL, executing, etc., are all get put into memory. So that's not going to dilute the result. So I've just run this. I'm just doing a single row fetch through 800,000 rows. This is the example of our poor scenario. Fetch a row, fetch a row, fetch a row, fetch a row, et cetera, 800,000 times. Now that I've done that to sort of prime the cache and get all this compiled, now let's rerun it, but this time we'll take some measurements of some of the latching structures. So I'll create a table called latch1. It's a copy of v.latch, because v.latch is one of the in-memory performance views which has cumulative counters for all the latching activity in the database. So if I want to see a delta, I need to take a copy, run my experiment, and then look at the v.latch minus the original version to get the delta. So let's now do that same piece of code that's already now been compiled in the library cache. We simply loop around 800,000 times. It's remarkably quick. And then what we do is we say, let's compare v.latch as it is now, and we'll do a full out of join back to latch one, which is the copy of v.latch we took before that experiment. And you can see that I'm just doing gets minus L1 gets to do a delta from after and before. A lot of stuff goes on. But luckily, we can find right down the bottom the probably most relevant latch here, which is cache buffers chains. Because we walked along chains of blocks in the buffer cache, and then when we found that to make sure that, that walking along that list was protected, we would take latches. In fact, we took 1.6 million of them. 1.6 million might have a bit of familiar bell to it. If I take the number of rows in that table times two, it's about 1.6 million. This is that concept of grab a latch, find a block, release the latch, et cetera. We've got various two times the number of latches based on the number of rows that we got there. And you can see, this is probably how we could look in our database to see if we've got massive numbers for cache buffers change latch, there's a reasonable probability that we're doing a lot of latching due to maybe single row fetching. Let's compare and contrast that with now a better example. So I'll drop my latch one table. I'll recreate it. So now it's the current version of Vidal Latch to get our current stats. And all I've done now is trivially change the query to just do a for i in select star. If you're not familiar with PL SQL, an implicit cursor loop like that will automatically do what we call array fetch of 100. And the moment you tell the database you're doing array fetching, as in give me 100 rows at a time, it goes, ah, oh, if you're telling me to, I'm going to probably get 100 rows at a time, I'll use the pinning model. I'll pin, grab it to 100 rows release the pin. So in this case, you can see, A, it's a lot faster, which is obviously a good thing. Here's my same delta query. Let's run it. And now rather than 1.6 million gets of the cache buffers change latch, we only did 52,000. Now, if you're looking for an order of magnitude, roughly, if I look at the number of blocks in the table times two, it's about 35,000. It's not exactly one for one, but it's in the same ballpark. Generally, you're looking at a couple of latches for each block you needed to navigate to, as opposed to each row you needed to navigate to. So you can see that's a dramatic improvement there in the amount of latching going on. If you look at your AWR reports, et cetera, and your cache buffers change lats, numbers are just, <laughs> typically if they're all asterisks or all hash signs, then you know <laughs> that it's, it's absolutely massive. The other thing you can look at is just at v$SQL. If you look at, for example, various queries where it says the number of rows processed was say a million and the number of fetch calls was a million, then you know you've got that one for one. If, those not, if the fetch calls is dramatically old and the rows processed, then there's a good chance you're doing array fetching. And the reason I wanted to mention that is it's very easy as DBAs or any kind of IT practitioner to, to get what I call into, uh, a friend of mine from many years ago, Gaja, used to say compulsive tuning disorder. And that is, you see these giant numbers in an AW report, for example, latches, and you go, oh, we have a latching problem, mate, must do. Well, earlier on when I was running these demos today, I took some AWR snapshots before and after. Even though I was running several of these all in the same session, you can see that what, where, was, where did I lose my time? Well, I you know, had a little bit of time here on DB sequential time, 1.4% of overall time. The rest is all CPU. You know, I was just literally just burning away at memory. So I lost 1.4% of my time doing some IO. If I look further down, with all that latching going on, the cost to me was still 0.01% of the overall response time. Now, there's a couple of reasons for that is. One is 
I would probably need to run dozens of concurrent programs smashing away at those common blocks in order to really get the latching workload up. And the second thing is, I was a little bit loose with the truth. Some of our latches now in the Oracle database have more extended structures to allow both exclusive and shared access. So if you're doing a query now, Oracle is now smart enough to go, ah, oh, you'll definitely need to be walking along this list of linked blocks in a read fashion because you're not doing select for update, you're not doing insert update or delete. Therefore, I'll let others walk along, along with the same latch. We have the concept of shared latches now, which therefore reduces the amount of uh, contention and, and allows greater concurrency. So there's a lot of cool stuff in the Oracle database, but the key thing I'm word of warning here is ultimately, no matter what the numbers are in terms of how much latching and stuff you're doing, the question is, what's it doing in terms of impacting your customers? And in this case, it's less than 0.01% you know, impact. The reason I would look at removing single row fetches is not to reduce the latching, not to reduce the CPU consumption, which admittedly on a cloud system is equates to dollars. It's for this. You saw, hopefully that demo, the moment you do array fetching, the performance benefits are huge. So if you can focus on removing single row fetching, not because of latching, not because of contention, not because of CPU, but simply because you'll have happy users, that's generally going to be the best way to go. Focus on efficiency and response time and the rest of it takes care of itself. <laughs>